Hi, I am Dr. Mandar Agashe, Pediatric Orthopedic Surgeon. As you know, we have our YouTube channel and I apologize that I could not uh, upload a few channels in the last month or so. So what we'll be doing is we'll start a few presentations and few lectures on our trauma series. So let's start with the basics, which is Pediatric Orthopedic X-rays. Now, Pediatric Orthopedic X-rays are something which are completely confusing. There's a lot of confusion because it is related to trauma, it is related to tumors, infections, metabolic causes. All of them have interchangeable uh, views on X-rays. Along with that, there may be some X-rays which look abnormal, but they are actually normal. Some of them, they are abnormal, but they are just variants of what is in the realm of normalcy. There are some who are abnormal, but don't require any special treatment. But there are some who are abnormal but do require special treatment and attention and that is where our skill lies. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going through a few case scenarios and putting forth the 10 tips in avoiding misdiagnosis in pediatric orthopedic x-rays. Let's see the first case. So this was a one day female, a neonate, just born after a difficult caesarean birth, has severe tenderness and swelling around the elbow. What is the diagnosis? Well, you can see that there is something wrong which is going on around the elbow. The typical diagnosis which is given by the radiologist usually, unfortunately, is something called as an elbow dislocation. Unfortunately or fortunately, we have the opposite side. So, we can compare. Now, this is the normal side x-ray. You can see this looks completely different than this. right? So, you can see that the ulna and the radius are in line with the humerus as against that here the ulna and the radius are directed posteromedially as compared to the humerus. So what is this? This is not an elbow dislocation. This is something which is called as a transphysial injury of the distal humerus. Now transphysial injury of the distal humerus is a type 1 Salter Harris injury of the distal humerus. Typical etiology is birth injury and so if you see any x-ray which has a posteromedial displacement in a neonate, it's almost always a transphysal injury. It never is, a dis is an elbow dislocation. Treatment is usually just a close reduction. Usually a slab for pain relief is absolutely fine. It has excellent remodeling potential and excellent healing potential. Usually heal with a mild pubitus varus or a rectus which can be corrected later on. So this is the long term outcome of the same. This is another case, a neonate with a difficult delivery. I, I want to acknowledge Dr. Maulin Shah, my colleague, uh, with uh, this uh, case. It was a difficult delivery with a breach with hyperabducted shoulders and comes with a gross deformity in the left shoulder. You can see like this. Again, reported as a shoulder dislocation. But what is it? It's basically a transphysial injury of the proximal humerus here. Here is the humerus where it is articulated with the glenoid and the shaft is somewhere else. So this is a transphysial injury of the proximal humerus. This is a proximal humeral physal separation. Treatment is just conservative, chest arm bandage with a roll in the axilla, shards throwing callus in a few weeks and this is completely remodeled at one year of age. So what should be remembered is that both cases have been diagnosed as dislocation. This is not a dislocation. What we should remember is that usually the physis cleaves at this zone which is the zone between the proliferative and the hypertrophic zone. The other thing is that the physis is the much weaker zone as compared to the ligaments or the bones and hence a dislocation almost never occurs in a neonate. So if you have a diagnosis which has been done of dislocation, think 10 times. It is almost always a physal injury which needs to be treated well. So the first teaching point is think 10 times before diagnosing a dislocation in a neonate or a very young child. This is another child, a 3 year old boy, has a fall from 5 feet height, has severe pain and inability to move the right hip. Is this normal? Is this normal but a variant? Is it abnormal but doesn't require special? These are the four options that which we have. This was unfortunately labeled as normal. But what you should remember is that you should always get one more view and that one more view is going to diagnose this. You can see that there is a there is a cleavage plane here which is the type 1 physial injury of the, pro, of the proximal femur 
which is a femoral neck fracture and this requires appropriate treatment. Teaching point two, always get a minimum of two views, uh, especially in a traumatic situation. You have this x-ray, a six year old, fall on outstretched hand, a severe pain around the elbow, a typical elbow injury in a young child. This was diagnosed as normal, but do you think that this is normal? They just probably diagnose that there is a small speck of bone. But what is very important to know is that you should always get a full length x-ray. In which case you should draw these two lines. What are these two lines? First is the radiocapitular line. So any line which is passing through the proximal humerus should pass through the center of the capitulum. Here the, the radiocapitular line is passing much more anteriorly. And there is this Scott Mubarak line which is the point between the most convex point, a most prominent point in the proximal humerus and the most prominent point in the ulna styloid. And this ulna should be crossing this line or it should be convex towards the line. Here it is concave which means that it is a plastic deformation of the ulna with an anterior dislocation of the radial head which is a Montagia fracture dislocation or a type 1 Montagia fracture equivalent. So what is the teaching home teaching point? Don't accept x-rays like this which are short length x-rays. Get appropriate full length x-rays especially when you are suspecting something around the radiocapitular joint. Next case, you have an obese 14 year old male, has distal thigh and knee, knee pain since the past 4 months, has difficulty in sitting cross legged and squatting. Everything around the knee has been done. It has been labeled as normal, the MRI also is showing some probably a uh, small grade 1 tear of the of the meniscus which has been diagnosed which has been treated like so but the pain is still persisting but what is the diagnosis he has some issue upstairs which is the the pelvis which is the right sided slipped capital femoral epiphysis which is being missed so this is a cause of a referred pain to the distal thigh and the knee and a slipped capital femoral epiphysis in an adult adolescent adult uh, obese boy should never be missed Thus, this is one of the most common cause of early arthritis in a young child and also a common cause of medical litigation for misdiagnosis. So, any adolescent with a thigh and knee pain get an x-ray of the pelvis done. So, what is the teaching point? Get x-rays of the appropriate joint. Don't miss the joint completely. See that in a distal thigh pain, you always get an x-ray of the hip done. Next x-ray, a 6 year old boy comes to me after a fall in outstretch hand whose slab was given elsewhere and an x-ray in the slab has been done. This has been reported as normal. On, after I removed the slab, I saw that he had lateral tenderness. So what is the uh, diagnosis here? Are we satisfied with the x-ray first of all? No, we should never be satisfied with the x-ray. Get an x-ray done without slab and an internal rotation x-ray. You can see that there is a grossly displaced lateral condyle humerus fracture. Now this should not be missed. This is a fracture of necessity. This almost always requires surgery and has a potential to cause significant deformity if untreated. Hence, get good quality x-rays done, preferably without immobilization. Remember, the child is growing to cry. You have to deal with that crying child and get a better x-ray done and don't accept an x-ray which is then done through the slab. Also get multiple oblique views done in this case. Next case, this is a 3 year old boy has a long standing bow leg deformity. Per pehle se teda tha is the history and then has a trivial fall and has inability to bear weight. Has been diagnosed with fracture of the tibia and plastered and sends, has been sent to me for non-union. Now, is this a non-union? No, this has something else. You can see that there is a gross deformity here, but the child also has multiple of these cafe au lait spots. So, what are these? These are the signs of neurofibromatosis 1, NF1, which is one of the most difficult conditions to treat, which, which is associated with congenital pseudarthrosis of the tibia. This requires early referral, referral and complex reconstructive surgery. So do not diagnose this condition as a non-union of the femur of the tibia or a traumatic non-union of the of the tibia. This is a congenital pseudarthrosis of the tibia associated with neurofibromatosis 1. So look at the entire clinical picture and not just the x-ray. Then we have this as 15 year old boy, athletic chap, has pain over the upper uh, tibia probably some history of trauma. He falls down 10 times a day while playing football and diagnosed to have this avulsion of the tibial tuberosity. 
what is this this is osgood schlatter's disease a very common adolescent condition similarly you have a 13 year old female with pain over the lateral side of the foot probably some twisting injury and has 10 point tenderness over this zone what is the diagnosis this is a condition called as isilin's disease both these conditions are diagnosed are a group of conditions called osteochondrosis they include conditions like osgood schlatter isilin's kohler's disease They are the, these are benign conditions in adolescents. They almost never require any major treatment. They are usually treated sim- symptomatically. So we should know about these osteochondrosis, especially in adolescents, because they are sometimes diagnosed as fractures. These are not fractures, but these are just benign conditions around adolescents, which are a part of him or her growing up. Another case: a twelve-year-old female has right-sided medial foot pain somewhere here. and has also flexible flat foot she has tenderness over the zone noted and you can see that there is this bone which has grown this is a fracture of the navicular no this is a accessory navicular so these are accessory bones which are which are seen sometime they are a cause of mild pain intermittently they can be treated conservatively in 99.9% of cases in very very rare cases do they require surgery so know about these accessory ossicles don't miss them don't diagnose them as fractures a unique case a 7 month old child mother noticed swelling around the right shoulder since 6 15 days there was no history of trauma a colleague of mine treated him symptomatically with an arm pouch or uh, st- strapping now after diagnosing it of frac- fracture clavicle however they came to me after a month they got an x-ray done and there was almost no callus here so what are we dealing with here why are, why am i discussing this case of a fracture clavicle in this lecture and suddenly why did i highlight right well this is a condition called congenital pseudoarthrosis of the clavicle so it's not a very rare condition sometimes seen it's a benign condition almost always occurs on the right in case it occurs on the left look at the heart usually it is associated with dextrocardia right so you can see that it is in the opposite side of the heart this is associated with dextrocardia so uh, there is something which is unique or hutke so in a, in pediatric orthopedics there are these hutke diagnoses the different diagnoses so we should know of these small little diagnoses so that that will help our life become easier last but not the least a very interesting case which came to me a newborn i was called after a breech delivery and referred for widely abducted position of the limbs now this position is sometimes seen after breech presentation and that is a benign condition but i was not very worried but they got an x-ray done the nicu specialist and they got an x-ray done which was reported for a large soft tissue mass now there are soft tissue masses which can occur in early in neonatal period congenital tumors they are completely significantly morbid they they may be requiring early surgery so i was very worried after i looked at this x-ray report i had to go rush to the nicu when i saw the uh, child i had to perform an emergency procedure in the nicu so this was the thing which before i performed this an emergency procedure and this was the x ray after i performed this nicu but the mass had completely disappeared so what did i do well i just removed his diaper so basically this big shadow was a shadow of the diaper so always remember a especially in a neonate or a very early child when you have to do a pelvis x-ray see to it that you remove the diaper or at least think of conditions not due to problems in the body thus let's see the take home points of this lecture take opposite side x-rays remember god has given you two sides for this reason that you can take opposite side x-rays take minimum of two views take full length x-rays and also take x-rays of the appropriate joints do not miss a, a slip capital femoral epiphysis by taking an x-ray of the distal thigh and the knee always get an x-ray done of the pelvis in an adolescent take good quality x-rays without plasters again without plasters is a key and also do oblique x-rays when you are suspecting anything around the elbow especially the lateral condyle humerus look at the entire clinical picture and not just the fracture it can be associated with other conditions like nf1 
know about osteochondrosis and the accessory bone these are as uh, bones which are occur uh, conditions which are associated with adolescence these are benign conditions and do not require treatment know some different diagnoses which are specific in pediatric orthopedics know about things like congenital pseudarthrosis of the tibia and others and finally think of shadows by the clothing they always remove diapers when you are taking a pelvic x-ray and thus you can see that this is going to lead to much less misdiagnosis of pediatric orthopedic x-rays thank you so much for the patient listening and i hope you share this video and subscribe my channel and i'll keep on posting more trauma videos in the next few days so see you soon thank you so much